Is Jimmy Garoppolo the most disrespected quarterback in football? Welcome back to Brave Birds DFS, one of the best places for PGA, NFL, MLB, and NBA news, and of course, DFS. If you don't know by now, I'm Walt. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe to my channel. Why my channel? Well, for the NFL season, I'm gonna put out four videos a week, one for Sunday night football, one for Monday night football, one for Thursday night football, and one for the Sunday main slate. And you know what? I might put a bonus video out there. The NFL is crazy. You know, we're gonna have some Saturday games. We've already had two, you know, London games so far, but I love this, so I'm gonna do this. So two things before I get into my analysis of this awesome Monday Night Football matchup, the Green Bay Packers are going to the Raiders. I was watching one of the people that I actually watch on YouTube, because you know I just watch other people that do this, and they were just talking about the dude wearing a hat in the house, and it's something I didn't even think about. I mean, it's not the 1840s, so yeah, we wear hats in the house now. All right, and number two, yes, I'm wearing my Falcons pullover. We only win like five games a year, so I got to celebrate my team because next week I'll be burning all of this. All right, so let's jump into this contest. Um, DraftKings has a Millie Maker for, well, actually, let me actually get to it. <laughs> I'm not showing it right now. Uh, showdown mode, Monday Night Football. All right, like I said, DraftKings has a Millie Maker, but they have a lot of other good contests. Uh, they have some single entries where you have you know, basically it's one-to-one -one versus people who are mass multi-entering contests. So they have a lot of good contests out there. Uh, the first thing I always like to look at are the snap counts. So we can start with the Las Vegas Raiders and Jimmy Garoppolo. He should be back from his concussion based on everything that we know at this point. Uh, so I think he is good to go. The running back situation, Josh Jacobs is getting better. He is the no doubt, you know, our number one running back for the Raiders, and I, you know, he his his year started off a little slow, but I'm I'm starting to trust him and believe in him more and more. You have Jacob Johnson, who's more of a fullback, and then you have Abdullah and White, who are the second and third string running backs. But we know that second and third string running backs, we know those third and fourth string wide receivers, and we know those wacky second and third string tight ends are sometimes the players that can win on win you the slate when it comes to showdown. So wide receiver. Devontae Adams, we'll see in a second. He has a questionable tag, but he's playing. I mean, I can't promise that, but I'm 99% sure he's playing. Uh, Jacoby Myers, what a great pickup from the Patriots, especially considering how they got their bus kicked today. I know they would love to have a target like Myers still on their team, and he has played well. You can actually see that uh, he actually outsnapped Adams uh, last week. And then you have Hunter Renfro, who <clears throat> Started out the year terrible, and then he's just been playing better and better every week. We'll kind of highlight him, and then you have a few other uh, wide receivers. So tight end, very, very interesting. Garoppolo, at this point so far, has really not thrown to his tight end. So even though Austin Hooper is a pretty good tight end, and he's on been on the field over 50% of the time, all but one game, his salary and his numbers don't match. So that's just one of those things you want to look out for. All right, let's move to Green Bay. And Green Bay, their situation outside of a quarterback, outside of the quarterback is a mess. All right, let's start with the running back. So A.J. Dillon has been getting more snaps because Aaron Jones has um, had a lot of injuries. A.J. Dillon, this was his chance to kind of just show out and prove everybody he could be an RB1 and he has had a not good season. And then Aaron Jones, maybe he came back a little early last week, but we know what he can do. We've seen years and years of Aaron Jones play like a champion. So maybe this is the week where he breaks out. Wide receiver. We know Christian Watson is a beast. They eased him back in. Last week, he was only on the field for 46% of the snaps. It had no impact on Dobbs. It really just impacted Torre and Wicks and the other wide receivers. So assuming that Watson is better, you would think that Watson would be on the field just as much as Dobbs this week. Tight end. <laughs> Man, these in-game injuries have been driving me crazy, and we saw it last week with Musgraves. I told you all, play Musgraves. He's an awesome, you know, tight end, and he is. But, of course, because I told you all to play him, he got a concussion. 
but he has clear concussion protocol and I really like him. I haven't changed. The concussion hasn't changed anything. He is when it comes to targets and we'll look at that. A good pick at tight end. And then you have DeGuara. He was on the field more last week because Musgraves had a uh, concussion, but you can still see that even uh, before that he was on the field a good amount of time. Obviously he doesn't run as many routes as Musgraves, but I like him as a tight end. All right, so what I'm gonna do next, I'm gonna show you three lineup constructions. This is just my thought process. It's kind of like when you, it's, I'm kind of like your friend that you're talking to, you know, you're texting and talking to and you're asking them about the game. I'm going to actually, you know, talk out my thought process that I believe can help you, you know, win that guap and help you adjust your lineups. So the first lineup I'm showing you, Excuse me, the first lineup I'm showing you is a lineup where you have Adams, and once again, it says questionable. I, look, we'll click on them. Let's click. Let's click. All right. You know, questionable, return to practice uh, for the first time, paving the way for him to play. So we assume that Adams is going to play on Monday Night Football. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, uh, he's obviously uh, the best player uh, from a DFS perspective in this matchup. So a lot of people are understandably going to put, you know, Adams in the captain spot because Adams can have a game kind of like DJ Moore had. We saw DJ Moore just break the showdown slate and a lot of people were happy because of that. And we know, I think we all can agree that Adams is a, uh, a better wide receiver than DJ Moore. So that's why people are going to put Adams in that captain spot. So I'm going risky here, you know, Aaron Jones, this is on his rep. This is not based on anything much that he's done recently. We know he had a good week one and that's the kind of Aaron Jones that we're used to. And we know what he did last year. So I'm hoping, you know, that he's back. And I think maybe this could be similar to David Montgomery two or three weeks ago when he came back. He was actually under owned because a lot of people were worried about him. You know, he had a questionable tag. Even the Lions at first said he wasn't going to play and he ended up playing and having three rushing touchdowns. So maybe this is something like that. So in this line of construction, I'm trusting Aaron Jones to be the Aaron Jones that we all know. I'm keeping in Garoppolo. You know, he's nice and steady. You know, he had 23 points, uh, 23 points, six, six points. But I think Denver week one is closer to what you would expect from him. And then I'm having the Raiders defense, which I think is going to be low owned because they deserve to be uh, low owned. But their defense, you don't want to overthink defenses. All it takes is one pick six. All it takes is one fumble. And then you're going to get your value for a defense. And it's not like the Green Bay Green Bay. I mean, I'm not disrespecting Green Bay, but they're not like this high powered at this point offense. So, and then I'm putting in the Guara because I've talked about it. Those second and third string, you know, running backs and tight ends and the third and fourth string wide receivers, those are the ones that sometimes break the slate. So since you're spending so much salary on Adams and uh, Aaron Jones, you need to save some in that final spot. All right. So my next lineup, load, oh great, didn't load. All right, so I'm gonna have to put it in. The next lineup, what we're gonna have, see, this is what happens when you don't do things live. All right, so my next lineup, we're gonna put in Jacobs. So Jacobs has been playing much better recently. We can look here and we can see that last game he had 27.9 points. So he's literally gotten better every single game and I expect that to keep up this game. And then we have Jacoby Myers. We talked about how he's a great pickup. You know, even with Adams out there, he's still been able to, um, to play well. He's kind of trending down. And that's when you want to get a good player. When everybody else is jumping off the bandwagon, you jump on. And then we have Watson. I believe that Watson is a second week back. You know, we know how well he can play. And I believe that he's someone that'll be a good pick. All right, next we have Jordan Love. Uh, we can look at Jordan Love. He has, I don't believe he's had a bad game yet. His lowest game is 19.64 points. We know that when you have a quarterback that can rush for touchdowns, it just gives you that lower floor. And then I told you, he's not gonna get a concussion this game. I'm going back to Musgraves. Uh, we can see before he had the concussion, he was doing really well. He was targeted eight, three, and four times. 
And then with the remaining salary, uh, we're going to go with the Raiders kicker. We know that kickers can always go off and we know that Carlson is a good kicker. And then my final lineup that we're gonna talk about, we're gonna say in this final lineup that, you know, Watson is all the way back um, and you put him in the captain spot. And then we're going to go with, you know, once again, Jones, this could end up being very risky, but uh, I think he's going to have a lower ownership than you would expect. And then we're going to put in Garoppolo and you're going to put in Dobbs. So, yes, I do think there's enough on the table for Watson and Dobbs, because, as you know, DraftKings is PPR. So I believe there's enough on the table for both of them to eat. And then we're going to put in Renfro. Renfro. We're going to put in Renfro. So um, once again, he's been trending in the right direction. We can look here. We can see that he had four targets. He went from no targets, one, two to four. So at 2,200, once again, this is kind of like Aaron Jones. This is on the strength of what he's done in previous years. And then we put in Myers. So this is a 3-3 construction. And this leaves a lot of salary on the table. And this makes a lot of people very, very nervous. But look, you're gonna, you're trying to, in this case, whether it's, I mean, this is extreme when you're trying to beat out 132,000 people. But even if it's a contest with two or 3,000 people, this right here alone is going to make you different. Not to mention in this construction, you are fading Devontae Adams. But we know with all the injury and fluke things that have happened this year, anybody can be faded. So leaving 1500, which isn't an extreme amount on the table can make you very different. And that can allow you to not have to share whatever you might win. So that's all I have for you today. Let me know if you have any comments and go out there and win that guap. Hey, you made it this far, you might as well like and subscribe and hit that notification bell and I'll talk to you next time.